flooded roads and accidents as a powerful spring storm soaks Malibu and Calabasas. We are not out of the woods yet. What city leaders are saying about their storm plan? A big step towards independence for Malibu Public Schools. What's needed for the separation solution to work? And mountain lions, oh my, the response from wildlife officials after more sites at Pepperdine. News at 5 starts now. A real spring storm soaking. The second day of rain is more intense and not over yet. Good evening, I'm Hansel Huang. And I'm Emily Tinser. You're watching the Thursday night edition of News Waves. Forecasters say some of the heaviest rain will move through the area later tonight. News Waves 32 reporter Logan Hall is live outside in Malibu. Logan. Thanks, Emily. It's uh, starting to slow down a little bit. The rain is still falling from the sky. The streets are wet and businesses are empty in Malibu. I caught up with local residents to see how they're handling the rain. It's the biggest rainstorm of the year. And although it's not quite as bad as predictions, Malibu residents are hunkering down and staying at home. Mary Williams is on vacation from Minnesota and she doesn't get what all the fuss is about. Well, I'm not from here, but I don't understand why everything comes to a standstill for the little water. Out-of-towners aren't the only ones picking up on the emptiness of the town. Local businesses have taken notice as well. You know, the rain will definitely keep people in, uh, in Malibu in. We, rainy days are always very slow for us. But for those who are brave enough to venture outside, Californians' unfamiliarity with driving in the rain poses all sorts of new issues on the road. Now, the, you, uh, you generally have the class of people that drive too carefully and they go about 30 miles under the speed limit, which is okay, but then they'll be in the fast lane. With accidents already causing problems along Pacific Coast Highway, locals are taking notice of unsafe drivers, accidents, and floods, and are being extra cautious when on the road. You're having to slow down, unless you want to get in an accident, which I've seen several of them, Definitely. so I chose to slow down a little bit more than we normally would. I was hoping for some sunshine this weekend, but meteorologists are saying it looks like there's still rain. We've got Michaela inside tracking it for us. Michaela, what's going on? Yeah, thank you, Logan. The heavy rain that we've been seeing all week has picked back up after a few hours of light drizzle. Heavier doses of rain are expected to begin around 7 this evening. There is a possibility for thunderstorms here in Malibu before midnight and a 90% chance of precipitation overnight. The storm we're experiencing spread south from San Francisco and brought a plume of subtropical moisture called an atmospheric river. The LA area, especially recent burn areas, are under a flash flood warning and mudslide watch through late tonight. More on weekend weather and some long-awaited sun coming up. Thanks, Michaela. Stepping towards school separation. For the first time, agreement on a plan to let Malibu have its own school district. Newswave's 32 reporter Josie Leonetti has more on the plan local parents and leaders are optimistic about. Josie? Thanks, Emily. Well, could Malibu be getting a school district of its own? After Tuesday's school district meeting, the plans are certainly there. The Santa Monica Malibu Unified School District has settled on an initial proposal that could eventually create a standalone Malibu school district. At last night's city council meeting, the two sides agreed to a 50-year revenue sharing plan that would allow the two districts to operate independently of each other. The board has also asked the city of Malibu to either take away or put on hold a petition Malibu has with the LA County Office of Education to separate the Malibu and Santa Monica district. Now the board has decided to put that on hold in order to allow the city and school board to negotiate together. Going forward, the superintendent is expected to come to a Malibu City Council meeting where the council will agendize their decision to either put on hold or withdraw the petition with the LA County Office of Education to disunify from Santa Monica. The school district, however, has already voted to oppose the city's petition. So if the council chooses to go ahead with the petition, they will have to fight it out and go through the county and eventually state. Malibu City Councilwoman Laura Rosenthal is hopeful that the board and city of Malibu can work together. The whole purpose has been to work together with the school district um, and come to um, an agreement together 
so that then we then work through LEGO together, we work through the State Board of Education together, we work through special legislation that we will need from Sacramento together. Councilwoman Rosenthal added the most positive thing to come out of the meeting was that they finally have a set plan that the city can support. And she hopes that Santa Monica and Malibu can work together to push that plan forward. Thanks a lot, Josie. Mountain lions are continuing to make themselves at home on Pepperdine campus. A university official sent out a release yesterday detailing nine mountain lion sightings in the past two weeks. Only two of the sightings were confirmed with pictures, one near student dorms and another near the campus, near the entrance to the campus. Despite these sightings, park rangers insist the concern is low as the cats try to avoid public places. They're very elusive. Wherever they are in the state or in the country, they don't want to be found by anything. <clears throat> Pepperdine officials say they are in close communication with National Park Service biologists about the situation. Student safety is their highest priority. The California Senator is proposing a law to shut down electricity in areas of high fire danger. The law wants electric companies to come up with a plan to cut power when big windstorms arrive. This topic stems back to last fall when Southern California Edison illegally cut off Malibu's electricity due to some Santa Ana winds. The new law would require a plan to secure traffic lights and other public electricity before leaving cities in the dark. You might not be able to use your phone while crossing the streets in Calabasas. The Calabasas City Council will be t t t talking up the issue of distracted walking next week. They will look at an ordinance recently passed by the city of Montclair. That ordinance made it illegal for pedestrians to cross the street while talking on the phone, texting, or wearing headphones. Pedestrian accidents in the city of Calabasas increased from 2016 to 2017. Expect road closures next week on Maholland Highway for a majority of the afternoon. Maholland will be closed on Monday in both directions between Declaration and Old Topanga Canyon Road. The highway will, will be closed from 9 a.m. to 1.30 in the afternoon. The closure is due to the Every 15 Minutes event at Calabasas High School. Every 15 Minutes is a state program covering drinking, driving, and personal safety responsibilities. The rain putting a damper on popular local Easter event. For a city known as Tree City USA, how the city of Calabasas is celebrating Arbor Day. Move over unicorn, Starbucks debuts its prettiest drink yet. It's supposed to be magical, but does it taste magical? and eventually everyone will see you for what you really are. A fake, a fraud, an asterisk. Don't be an asterisk. It's easy to tell if you've had way too many. But what if you've had just one too many? Buzz driving is drunk driving. Well, this is nice. So, what do you want to talk to me about, Mom? Oh, um, at school. Do they, um, have any of your friends ever taken drugs, sweetie? I don't think so. Does anyone ever talk about drugs at school? Talking to your kids about drugs can be tough, so you'll need to be ready. For help, visit our website at drugfree.org. My pot of gold, your daddy's little girl, till heaven home. It's easy to tell if you've had way too many. But what if you've had just one too many? Buzz driving is drunk driving.
hopping from this weekend to next. The Easter hopping has been postponed. Hunting Easter eggs is no fun in the rain, so the Easter event is moved to next Friday, just a few days before Easter. With special appearances by the Easter Bunny himself, kids can expect a fun Friday of activities, food, and of course, Easter eggs. The hunt is from 3 to 6 in Malibu Bluffs Park. Tickets are $5, but egg hunters can receive a complimentary pass by donating a box of crayons to the crayon collection. Now, I know this week has been full of rain, but that's lots of rain. Crazy, they're even postponing this event. I know Pepperdine yeah. has a few events they're postponing too, just because of this weather. Yeah, you actually can't use any of the fields at Pepperdine if it's rained within 24 hours. So I know there's a lot of philanthropies getting postponed and a lot of different things happening because of the rain. But luckily with this weekend, we are seeing a lot more sun coming up. So I've been, thankful. I know I've been waiting for that. Very thankful. Mm -hmm. So rain, rain, go away. Malibu is facing, has been facing its own week of spring showers, but it looks like sun may be coming our way. Let's have a look at the current conditions. So in Malibu, as we've talked about, it is currently raining with a high of 57 degrees and a low of 50. Humidity is pretty high today, up at 95% with winds blowing around 11 miles per hour. Taking a look at our regional temperatures now, they're all seeming fairly similar right now. We've got Calabasas up at 57, Malibu is at 57 as well, Agora Hills 56, <coughs> Thousand Oaks at 58, and down here in Santa Monica we are seeing the highest temperatures but still not too high, around 59. Taking a look at the fire danger now, luckily with all this rain the fire danger is low this past week. That threat will remain very low throughout the weekend. Now looking at surf con surfing conditions, they are currently fair throughout Malibu with waves at around two to three feet. However, conditions are a bit better if you wanna drive a little further near Zuma Beach with waves reaching up to five feet. Looking at our four day forecast heading into the weekend, we're finally gonna see some long awaited sun. Friday we'll be seeing a high of 61 with a low of 56, partly cloudy. Saturday we'll be seeing sunny with a high of 60 and a low of 45. And then we'll be seeing Sunday, sunny with a high of 57 and a low of 44. Monday, sunny with a high of 61 and a low of 46. So we are going to be seeing some of those, not necessarily warmer temperatures, but definitely some sun heading into the weekend, which I know I'm relieved about. I know after, you know, a week of gloom, it's nice to just know that the weekend will have yeah, sun, you know. Definitely. Hopefully we'll see the sun continue and we'll see the temperatures rise and finally get some nice spring weather. I know and hopefully it's rained enough that April doesn't need to rain. Yeah, we don't need April, April showers. showers. <laughs> we'll get I feel the, like we've we'll got enough this week. Right I don't know, me personally, <laughs> but all that rain has to be good for the environment, mm, you know? Definitely. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. All right, thanks so much, Rikayla. Thank you. All right, so are you ready for the start of Earth Month? The Malibu City Council is dedicating March 24th to April 30th to the Earth. To kick it off, the city will be observing Earth Hour on Saturday. From 8.30 p.m. to 9.30 p.m., residents and businesses are being asked to turn off their lights. Santa Monica's Ferris wheel will also be going dark. And this Saturday's sunny afternoon, as Michaela was talking about, opens up the perfect opportunity to help plant a tree. The city of Calabasas is hosting an Arbor Day celebration. The free event is free and residents are encouraged to come out and help create a healthy environment for the city. The event is at A.E. Wright Middle School from 10 a.m. to noon. The official tree planting ceremony will be at 1130. And so Starbucks is also thinking about the environment. It's in search for a more environmentally friendly cup. The company launched a $10 million challenge for someone to invent a cup that's compost compostable breaking down in a way that is basically make, allowing it to disappear. Uh, the problem isn't just the paper, but the waterproof lining needed to keep the coffee drinks hot. Inventors working on a solution to the cup conundrum will receive grants. And on to more Starbucks news, you'll see your future looking into a crystal ball or better yet, a crystal ball frappuccino. Released today for only four days is Starbucks' newest limited magical frap, and it even tells your future. The peach-flavored drink is topped with three colored candy gems, each color telling a different fortune. So blue means adventure is to come, 
green means good luck, and purple gems predict wonder and enchantment in the future. Hansel, of those colors, which ones do you want on your oh, drink? Man. I kind of want, I kind of want purple or maybe blue. I like purple. <laughs> you know, wonder and enchantment in the future. Exactly. I, I did read an article that Starbucks made it clear that if you get the the green good luck things on your frappuccino uh -huh. and you don't have good luck. They are not responsible for your bad luck, oh, so really? <laughs> okay. can't can't do a lawsuit with that one with exactly. that frappuccino. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, high tech car break-ins. And no prying or window smashing. The electronic way thieves are getting into locked cars. How to protect your vehicle? He saved lives. He won hearts and won medals. The story of an unusual war hero coming to movie theaters. Start a story. Adopt at the shelterpetproject.org. I got no full circles in Shocking because it rolled over time. Just had a few drinks. This can't be happening. Are we clear? Clear. We just buzzed. Just buzzed? You didn't tell us that, sir. You're right. This isn't happening. You'll be fine. Yeah, I feel good. Really? No, not really. Buzz driving. Maybe we should stop acting like it's no big deal. As a parent, sometimes it's hard to believe your kids listen to a word you say. So when it comes to drugs and alcohol, it can be tempting to say nothing at all. But you actually have tremendous influence. So it's a simple choice. In this hand, how to make your kids more likely to get involved with drugs. In this one, how you can help them stay away from drugs. of you. That's the theme for Pepperdine Hawaii Club's Luau tomorrow night, an event taking care of the land back in Honolulu. From Malibu to Hawaii, it's Pepperdine Hawaii Club's biggest event of the year. Everyone is encouraged to come with aloha spirit to this year's Luau. The club has been preparing for a long time, practicing since January for Friday's dance performances. It's when we all get to come together as a club and we put in a lot of effort and time and when it all comes together and we get to share it with everyone is the best part. The songs tie into this year's theme, a focus on the old Hawaiian tradition of divvying up land. The theme for Lua this year is Ahupua'a um, and Malama Ikaina. The theme is prominent in the lyrics of their songs and their philanthropy the proceeds are going towards. The phrase uh, Emalama Ikaina is the idea that Emalama means to take care of and Ikaina is the land. So if you take care of the land, the land will take care of you. Um, tying in the whole theme of Ahupua'a and like the method that they use to divvy up land, but also our own philanthropy and taking care of the people and the people will take care of you. Taking care of Honolulu's habitat for humanity. Honolulu has one of the highest homeless populations in the U.S. We take care of our land and create habitats and homes for people that need it, that we're ultimately helping out everybody rather than just one group of people. It's a great night for a great cause, an evening full of traditional Hawaiian dances, food, and live performances. Uh, Tickets are selling fast as the club tables outside the cafeteria. The Hawaii Club Luau is this Friday from 5 to 8 at the Intramural Fields. If you know of anyone in the community going out of their way to help others, we would love to hear about it for a chance to be featured in our Thank You Thursday segment.
You can nominate someone by sending an email to pepnewswaves at gmail.com. So the event is tomorrow. We were talking about the rain. I really hope that the fields, they, I really hope it won't yeah. be postponed and that they can have it tomorrow, but there's gonna be food live performances, music and dance. But Maddie here, you have another event, right? With music yeah. and dance. So moving from Hawaii to Japan, a blend of ancient Japanese culture and 21st century American innovation takes the stage tonight for a performance you do not want to miss. The American Taiko group called Taiko Project uses Taiko, music, choreography, to tell their story. The Taiko Project is an award-winning group that has performed and recorded with Stevie Wonder, Usher, Alicia Keys, and many more. The performance will be held at Smothers Theater and tickets range from $17 to $40. And moving on, the Malibu Film Society is recognizing Malibu-based producer, director, and now Oscar winner this weekend. The Society is holding an award presentation and screening this Saturday of Brian Fogel's Oscar-winning documentary entitled I Carcass. I Carcass follows Fogel's journey as in he investigates the doping scandal that confirmed Russia's long-hidden doping program. Doors open at 6.30 with the presentation starting at 7.30. Tickets must be reserved on the Film Society's website. And a little more serious type of film, Man's Best Friend is taking another role, American Hero. Based on a true story of America's most decorated dog, Surgeon Stubb is a family-friendly film that brings triumph, adventure, and family love to the screen. The story takes place in World War I as a young stubby is given the chance to be part of an incredible journey to defend his country. This animated feature will hit theaters April 13th and a full trailer can be seen on the film's website. I love dog movies, but even if it's animated like that Sergeant Stubbs movie, I can't I can't watch them yeah. without crying. Oh. I know. Even if it's a happy story, I can't do I it. And it's really interesting that they're, you know, using this animation to tell World War One to true. such a young audience. I feel like most dog movies that I think of are actual, you know, trained real exactly. life dogs. Yes. Unless I don't know. I can't. I'm having a hard time thinking of a real life cartoon. Yeah, this dog will movie, definitely. So that's new. Yeah, it will definitely be a good show. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much, Maddie. Thank you. Uh, the March for Our Lives movement is spreading to Southern California. March for Our Lives is a demonstration planned by Parkland survivors to demand safety from gun violence and mass shootings in schools. There will be a march in Santa Monica on Montana Avenue at 10:30 a.m. Kids and families are expected to gather to show support with posters and banners. Mysterious electronic car break-ins have caused Santa Monica residents to be on neighborhood watch. But there are some ways to pre prevent the recent universal key fob burglary issue. Newswave's 32 reporter Gabby Gonta has the story. Everything that was in my car was gone. So including everything in the glove box, my sunglasses, my change. It's stolen my uh, backpack with all my schoolwork stuff in it. And they did steal my purse, my backpack, my laptop. Something Santa Monica residents have had in common in the last year, car break-ins. But without evidence of them actually breaking in, police think it has to do with this right here, your keyless entry key fobs signal. But some thieves have a fob of their own a universal one that boosts the signal of your own keys to extend the range that the keyless entry will open your car. A lot of people have no garages, or if you do, you have a one-car garage. So people living in townhomes and apartments that are forced to park on the street overnight get set up for the risk. Nothing you can really do about that. We said they just kind of test it out on whatever car it works on, and if it's able to open the car, it's able to open the car, and the alarm doesn't go off. Lost Hills Sheriff Deputy Mike Raines said that preventing the break-in is hard, but catching someone using a universal key is even harder. Unless you catch somebody with it, it would be hard to determine if they've actually used one. Unless somebody's been caught with it, and I don't know if anybody has, he said. Still, there are a few tricks to keeping your car safe. People were recommending to put your keys in the freezer 
but any metal covering will do. You could also put it in the microwave or wrap the entire fob in tin foil. There are also websites set up to keep the Santa Monica community in conversation. My husband went on the Nextdoor site and started seeing multiple posts about it happening all around our neighborhood. I use the Nextdoor website to stay involved with what's going on. And through the Nextdoor website, I found out about the Neighborhood Watch we're starting. But there seems only one sure way to protect your belongings. I just don't keep anything in my car anymore. Yeah. Um, just literally nothing of value, so. I'm Gabby Gonta, Newswaves 32. Car companies are currently working to resolve the issue. The NCAA, N NCAA tournament is back with the Sweet 16. The scores, the highlights, and the bracket upsets. No need for dipping if you love Taco Bell, the new snack for you. Most people with diabetes also have high blood pressure and cholesterol, which can cause severe heart damage. In fact, two out of three people with diabetes die from heart disease or stroke. Call 1-800-DIABETES for your free diabetes survival guide. Don't let diabetes break your heart. Taco Bell is bringing its unique menu style to stores. The fast food chain is introducing a new line of tortilla chips. The three chip flavors will be classic, mild, and fire flavored. They will be available in grocery and convenience stores in May. The flavors and the packaging are inspired by Taco Bell's signature sauce packet. So I know those chips and from the sauces can be pretty fiery, but what about sports fire on the courts, right Ian? These March Madness brackets are blowing up. <laughs> March Madness is moving to Los Angeles. Newswave's 32 sports reporter Arthur Poo has a preview of tonight's games. The madness is taking over Los Angeles. The 2018 NCAA Division I Men's Basketball Championship West Regional is taking place at the Staples Center, hosted by Pepperdine University. Play begins today with Texas A&M taking on Michigan before Florida State faces Gonzaga. The winners of each game will face off in the Elite Eight on Saturday afternoon. The winner of the West Regional here at Staples Center in Los Angeles will advance to play in the Final Four taking place in San Antonio, Texas. For Newsways 32, I'm Arthur Poo. Two Pepperdine men's volleyball players achieved all league honors this week. David Wyzorich won League Offensive Player of the Week while his teammate Alex Harthaller won Defensive Player of the Week. The team went 3-0 during this stretch, riding the performances of Wyzorich and Harthaller. This is Wyzorich's fourth offensive honor this season, the most in conference history, while this is Harthaller's first career award. Congratulations to him. The LA Galaxy may be adding a world-class star to their roster this season. Latan Ibrahimovic is making a voyage from the west shores of a Britain to the golden sands of California, as he expected to sign with the Galaxy. Ibrahimovic is the second most decorated active soccer player in the world, winning 32 trophies. Is he scheduled to sign a two-year contract this Saturday? Thanks, Ian. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. That'll do it for tonight. Thank you for tuning in to this Thursday edition of News Waves. The song of the day is Flames by David Guetta and Sia.
Today's release is their first song since their hit, Titanium. Good Morning Malibu starts tomorrow at 9. Good night.